Corinne und Nina, bitte auf eure 15 Minutes. Aha. Guten Morgen, schön da mit euch in St. Gallen zu äh, Zuerst wollen wir ein großes Dankeschön aussprechen an Roland Schieger für die Einladung und das gesamte Typo-Team für auch äh, das, den warmen Empfang. Ähm, und auch ein Dankeschön an die anderen ReferentInnen, die mit uns hier heute den Tag teilen und natürlich das Publikum. Ihr, wir gehören alle zusammen zu, zu einem Event. Ähm, ich bin Corinne Gieser, das ist Nina Paim und äh, wir haben zusammen in Basel ein Studio für Designforschung, wie wir das nennen, mit dem Namen Common Interest. Noch ein kurz, kurz zum Erklären, wir haben, wir haben beide ursprünglich eine Ausbildung in Grafikdesign gemacht und danach aber weitere Ausbildungen äh, absolviert und Erfahrungen gesammelt im Bereich äh, Kulturjournalismus, Designforschung und Kuration. Und heute machen wir, machen wir, konzipieren wir, verfassen wir Bücher, Ausstellungen, Workshops, Events und mehr zu sehr unterschiedlichen Themen, ähm, oft mit einem starken Fokus auf soziale Gerechtigkeit, unterrepräsentierte Geschichten und auch umweltschützerische Aspekte. Äh, in all unserer Arbeit glauben wir sehr fest an die Kraft der Gemeinschaftlichkeit, die unseren Unterschiedlichkeiten entspringen kann. Nina und ich sind in vielen Aspekten sehr unterschiedlich. Allen voran, Nina ist aus Brasilien und ich aus der Schweiz. Aber wir haben, so wie man sieht, auch ein paar gemeinschaftliche Aspekte zu uns und wir, und wir sind der festen Überzeugung, dass das Zusammenkommen unserer beiden Perspektiven, Hintergründe, Lebenserfahrungen und Persönlichkeiten unserer Arbeit stärker, kritischer, reichhaltiger und differenzierter macht. Heute werden wir euch einen sehr kleinen Einblick in unsere langzeitige, noch nicht abgeschlossene historische Recherche zum Verlag Artunikli gewähren. Wir arbeiten derzeit an einem Manuskript für ein Buch, das 2021 mit dem Triest Verlag rauskommen wird. Wir sind also immer noch mittendrin, immer noch am Schreiben, immer noch am Weiter recherchieren und Daher soll auch gesagt werden, werden, falls hier irgendjemand im Publikum auch weitere Erinnerungen, Anekdoten, Hinweise, Kritiken etc. zum Verlag Arthur Nickli hat, sind wir immer dankbar für jegliche Hello? Hinweise. Ähm, da wir das Buch auf Englisch verfassen, werden wir heute die Präsentation auch auf Englisch machen. Soll aber gesagt sein, äh, falls irgendjemand nachher mehr so eine persönliche Kurzfassung wünscht, kann man einfach auf mich äh, zukommen. Und ich wechsle jetzt auf Englisch. I'm gonna switch to English now. And I'm gonna hand over the mic to Nina, who, who will start us off. off. I'm, I'm shorter. Good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be with you today. So the research on the history of Elag Artunigli started over three years ago as my master project in design research from the Bern University of the Arts. What initially brought me to this topic were a few graphic and typography manuals, which I'm sure many of you here tonight will recognize and cherish. Some of these books were published almost 60 years ago, and several of them went through multiple reprints and re-editions. A few of them have gained a sort of cult status and became collector's items. At first, I was intrigued by their aura, so to speak, by their mystique, by what they represented to me, which was Swissness. They are still around, being sold, being recommended to students, despite some major cultural and technological shifts in graphic design over the past six decades. I myself was recommended some of these very books during the early years of my bachelor in Brazil back in the late 2000s. So this was my starting point, the canon of Swiss graphic design. But as I learned, 
What makes research interesting are the unexpected findings, the plot twists, as we like to say. The stories that are stranger than fiction, the stuff that you just cannot make up. In this first phase of existence, Nigli's program expanded far beyond architecture, arts, and design. The company, which was founded and led by the couple Ida and Arthur Nigli between 1951 and 1992, based in the nearby city of Teufen. With an overall appeal for pedagogical books, the couple made publications in various other areas, such as literature, the regional and the folkloric, music, cooking, and even sexuality. A fact that today remains largely unknown. I was then just a newcomer to Switzerland, living here in St. Gallen, and the project became a gateway for me to understand this exotic alpine country of yours, as well as to position myself as an outsider looking in. Shortly after I finished the MA, Corinne and I started our practice common interests, and then Nigli research started taking more unexpected turns. You can take over here. Yeah. Oh, yes. One of the first things Nina did after I joined the project was to, oh yeah, I, there were more pictures, was to bring me to a bunker. Several meters underground in a civil defense shelter from 1983, the Cantonal Library of Appenzell Asseroden in Trogen houses one of the most complete collections of books published or co-published by Verlag Otto Nikli. The library's efforts of collecting, however, has, have been a retroactive or one could say a restorative one. Often to the dislike of local people, Ida and Arthur Nikli were not ones to keep their mouths shut about things they didn't agree with, policies they took issue with, or inequalities they came in touch with. They were very vocal. One person who apparently didn't see eye to eye with them was the can cantonal librarian at the time. He did not really collect their books as he actually should have, but only a few that exclusively dealt with open cell topics. Thanks to the efforts of two later librarians, Matthias Weishaupt and the one of today, Heidi Eisenhut, the Nickley shelf has been growing and expanding over the past few years. The latest information we have is that there are now over 400 books as part of that collection. And actually, as a little side note, a uh, kleiner Hinweis, die, da, um, Dank den Bemühungen von Uli Vogt sind diese Bücher im Moment äh, im Zeughaus Teufen, was ja nicht sehr weit von hier weg ist. Ähm, und jeden Sonntag äh, sind die auch offen, also sonst ist ein Netz drüber, weil da auch einige ähm, wertvolle Bücher darunter sind. Aber jeden Sonntag ist das Netz auch, wird das Netz entfernt und jede und jeder darf die Bücher ähm, anschauen. Thank you for that, Uli. Uh, beyond these books, however, the library has very few other historical sources. And there is no company or family archive that would still have documents, contracts, or letters. And so going down to that bunker was just the beginning of a historical goose chase that is still ongoing. Because publishing beyond the books it produces leaves very few traces behind, or at least they are rarely kept and therefore very hard to find. Before you can find, you must be looking. Before you go looking, you must know what you're after. But what exactly is a publisher? Publishing, to start with the definition, is to make things public. In the case of books, it is to send forth the words and pictures that creative minds have produced, that editors have worked over, that printers have reproduced. Publishing is a succession of activities, none of which, seen in isolation, qualify as publishing per se. Selecting a new title is not publishing, writing is not publishing, editing is not publishing, settling a contract is not publishing, organizing image rights is not publishing, and neither is designing, printing, selling, or reviewing a book. It is only in their totality, in their coming together, that these many activities make up what publishing is. A publisher, therefore, is a medley, a concatenated succession of actions that form a fundamentally relational enterprise. Publishing is a field of forces or a field of struggles, to borrow the words of French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu. The task of finding a publisher is the task of following the trails of a messy, queer, 
unbound network of activities and actors. So in order to find Nigli, we must dive into an entangled web. Finding Nigli. The title of our book spells out the essence of this project. It is a distillation of following this web, hunting for clues, and connecting the many pieces together. As our research progresses, aspects of international versus local politics and economics are becoming incre increasingly apparent. What started with an innocent inquiry into graphic design history has become a story about an internal network of publishers full of political fervor. We are now not just looking at Ida and Arthur Nikli's Verlag in Teufen, but also Willi and Hanna Verkauf's publishing and bookselling endeavors in Palestine, Vienna, St. Gallen, and Teufen, Gerd Hatte, Ursula Hatte, and Ruth Wurster's work for the Gerd Hatte Verlag in Stuttgart, Alec Tiranti, uh, art supplies bookstore and publishers in London, and Wittenborn and Company publishers and booksellers in New York. When we were down in that bunker, we never imagined that we would later head up the Hudson River from New York to Pleasantville to hear a story full of violence. We never thought we would be petitioning old court case files on defamation and pornographic publishing charges. Nor did we dream that about being faced with the question of how to verify whether someone was actually a spy in Switzerland during World War II. By the way, if anyone knows how we can verify that, still looking for clues. It is a project that is truly stranger than fiction, full of plot twists, as Nina called them. Finding Nikli is about books that were cherished, valued, awarded, idolized, and canonized. But it is also about books that were criticized, disputed, disregarded, neglected, forgotten, lost, banned, seized, and and even burned. Finding Nikli has inevitably become a history that entangles the field of cultural publishing with World War II persecution, Holocaust victimhood, war imprisonment, anti-fascist resistance, war-era espionage, post-war politics, Cold War economics, international collaboration, paper shortage, postal service issues, tax law aspects, national cultural policies, anti-pornography laws, local disputes, personal sacrifice, and even domestic abuse, attempted murder, and suicide. Publishing is fundamentally political. Finding Nigli has become, in many ways, a quest of looking beyond the canon and into the blind spots, the gaps, the stories and actors that have fallen through the cracks. And oftentimes, these were women. I'm guessing most of you here tonight, or to this morning, have heard the name, sorry, a bit tired. <laughs> I'm guessing that most of you here this morning have heard the name Arthur Nigli before, but how many of you know about his unwavering partner, Ida Nigli, an editor, writer, translator, gallerist, and a quintessential publisher? Finding Nigli is also about the women who are integral to the business of making books, but whose contributions and achievements has long remained unacknowledged. Discovering their voices has, a be, has been a kind of revelation to us. It is as if, as if they were speaking to us directly from the past, their words buried in dusty documents. At the end, this project has been an ongoing journey for us to embrace the true feminist researchers we are. And for that, we must not only thank Ida Nigli, but also Joyce Wittenborn, Hanna Verkauf, Marguerite Tiranti, Ursula Hattie, Ruth Wooster, Jacqueline Triwith, and Lucia Moholy, and many more women in publishing that have been speaking to us through this research. At the end, we would like to leave you with a few words by Ida Nikli herself. What is more, I have been sensitized too much to argumentations that reek of dictatorship and intolerance in the course of my life, that I would ever stay quiet about such issues or would ever have my mouth forced shut. In German, the original German reads, Zudem bin ich im Laufe meines Lebens zu hellhörig geworden für Argumente, die nach Diktatur und Intoleranz riechen, als dass ich in Zukunft über all diese einfach schweigen und mir zwangsweise einen Maulkorb umbinden lassen könnte. Danke. Ja.
Merci. Il est négligé, les gars. Nina Palm, Corinne Gisell, vielen herzlichen Dank.